Hi, I'm Borkum. Glad to have you here. We need to get some piglin bartering going. I decided to get in on the bartering action sooner than originally planned because the next release will nerf certain items. Let's build up a small stock of glowstone and magma cream in case we need them later. As you can see here, I only have one bartering station for piglins and I'm only planning on putting two piglins in there. You may laugh comparing this to other massive bartering operations that others have showcased where they have dozens of piglins and huge problems with item collection and sorting. But I did some math. A gold farm that's reasonable to build has a peak efficiency of below 800 ingots and 35,000 nuggets per hour when killing manually with looting free by the way, not in AFK mode. And that adds up to around 4,700 ingots per hour. One piglin can eat 600 ingots per hour. 4,700 divided by 600 is about 7.8. So a reasonable gold farm can feed less than 8 bartering piglins. Why would you then have so many more? Now, my farm here isn't as efficient as the theoretical maximum. I'm getting slightly less than 2,000 ingots per hour. Enough to feed 3 and a quarter piglins. If I want to have some gold left over for, I don't know, powered rails and maybe spawn proofing the never with gold pressure plates, two piglins should be more than enough. Especially since the loot from bartering with two piglins can be managed with a single line of hoppers. Now, there is a way to set up this hopper I'm standing on to pick up twice as much loot, so I could cram four, maybe even five piglins here, but then the sorting system would get so much more complicated. Let's just keep it simple. If we run out of things to do in the future, we can revisit this and make a system that can handle half a million items per hour. But first, we need to visit the Mender to get some name tags. And the Mender portal is actually just around the corner here. Well, there are no corners on the Never Roof. It's all flat, but you know what I mean. Hello, Mr. Mender. Two name tags, please. One, two. Thank you. It's a very nice shop you have here. Do not be afraid of my face. It's actually me, hiding behind this piglin. Which you know, because you still have the good prices. By the way, now that I'm passing through this area, I have cleaned up this a little bit, it's nothing exciting, just blackstone, 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 and I set up these lights. They're hiding behind the stairs, the little shroom lights. I'm not sure if this is a great idea, or maybe just something more plain like this. This was the other design I went for. Not even sure if I like the shroom lights here, or maybe some more blue light would be nice. Maybe soul fires, or sea lanterns. Not sure, but the two different designs, I'm gonna decide which one I like more later. Or maybe I will keep both, why not? But now, the hardest part of any project ever naming things. I am terrible at making up good names for things. I have, uh, over the years, actually abandoned projects because I just couldn't find a good name for them. I have dozens of dead projects hiding somewhere in my archives because I just didn't know what to call them. So I have developed a method. If I can't make up a good name in five minutes, I just call it Bob. Whatever it might be, the name Bob always works, because it's funny when you say it. Bob. 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 So, since I already spent half a day trying to figure out a good name for my piglins, I'm just gonna call them Bob. Bob. 
Lucky enough, there is a crimson forest this close to the farm. I can just set up a small spawning platform here and try to catch some piglins. What could possibly go wrong? if this is just perfectly above that little spawning space. Of course, oh, yeah, everything is gonna spawn here because because I'm too close to those spawning spaces. And if I'm here, everything will spawn below. This might have been stupid. I might need to go a little bit further. I'll keep trying. And I'm also too close to this one. Right, very smart. Setting up your temporary spawning space between two farms. Eventually something will spawn. And maybe I shouldn't have the lights here because I learned that piglins don't spawn in too high light, apparently. Who knew? Well, everybody knew except me, I guess. And that's a piglin, but not the kind we want, because apparently baby piglins never grow up. And more hoglins, come on. Ah! There is one piglin. And he has a sword. I really want them to have a sword and not a crossbow. Because I'll be opening chests near them and stuff like that. And actually, wait, I need to get rid of this guy first. I'm going to be opening chests next to them. And I don't want them to beat me up just because they become aggressive. Aim tag. Thank you. Get rid of that guy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Relax, dude. And I'm hoping that he can pathfind to me when I'm here. Yes. Bad man, wearing the face of your friend. Yes, hello. Chase the bad man. Good. Do, 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 do. I am hoping that he's following me. Yep, run, run, run. Well. That was close, but it worked. Now, just need one more. Now we got many friends here, including this guy. Hello, Robert number two. Ow. This might get very, very awkward. I think his sword might be enchanted with something brutal. And he stole my gear, so yeah, that was... That. 
And he stole my elytra. So we wasted a name tag. Because he will not give that back. Let's try a safer method. Hello, Bob. Here's a cookie. Follow the co no, 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 no. Wrong way. Yes, follow the cookie. And another cookie. Gonna be here. Is it close enough? Oh, yes. And follow the cookie. Too far. Let's give him a cookie. Hey! Cookie! And another cookie here. Hey, Bob. Yes, into that hole. Into that hole. You can do it. Oh, there we go. There we go. And now we have a problem. These guys are standing on a carpet, which means that they're a little bit too high up. Actually, first I need to remove that trapdoor. Thank you. But these guys are a little bit too high up, so I cannot place the glass block on top of their head. The solution is this. solution would be that if I knew what I was doing but now I do so the way this works in case there aren't enough descriptions of piglin bartering farms on the internet the way this works is that the piglins are standing on a carpet on a hopper the hopper is there to pick up the loot they drop we have a dropper here that is shooting out golden goats to them and since they're standing on that carpet, they are just close enough to be able to pick up the gold if it's next to the edge here. And, and it is. The gold pressure plate detects if there are entities on top of it. And if there aren't, it deactivates this repeater, which deactivates this piston, which lowers this observer in front of that observer, and that enables the clock that makes the dropper drop more items. If we go around on this side, I have a little bit lazy slash safety mechanism that disables this whole thing if there isn't anything in this dropper. And I do that by just having a comparator read the dropper, and when it's empty, the comparator will output no signal, which will allow this torch to turn on, and that will give a signal to the piston to extend and disable the clock. That's pretty much it. A variation on the same theme that a thousand people have already done differently. It's not the most compact or tileable design, but it's mine, and it works, and it's good enough. Isn't it the law in 116 that you should document when you're breaking your first ancient debris? Well, here it is. I found a few more ancient debris when out mining in the nether. But as you can see here, I have no levels and no gear. The short story is, I fought the lava and the lava won. What hurts the most is losing three shulker boxes of blackstone I had mined for my next project. <sighs> Time to get enchanting. We will rebuild. You should always use disaster as an opportunity to improve things, if possible. I've added an enchanting setup next to the XP and gold farm. And I have also 
improved the item pickup system to be twice as fast because it's it was actually backing up when I was looting here manually. Especially with this sweet sword I made, which has Smite 5 instead of my normal sword that has Sharpness 5. Smite 5 and Sweeping Edge 3 clears all the zombified piglins in one hit. And thanks to this neat enchanting setup, I have made tons of books again. And my gear is now almost as good, or maybe as good as it was before. All the protections that I need, fire protection on the helmet, because fire protection in the nether is more important than anything else. And this is my nether helmet, this is my normal helmet. This was actually a surviving pickaxe, because I had it in my ender chest. And some shovel, new axe new sword, new bow, new everything. And we're back! Now I'm going back to the nether to get some more blackstone. And now, when I have filled the shulker box, it's gonna end up in my backpack. Here is the spot for the accident, and something has survived. It was a bit of ancient debris. The only thing that didn't burn in the lava. Let's clean this up. The way I died was that I was digging a tunnel here and found a few pieces of ancient debris. And I realized that it was stupid to have the tunnel at level 6, just over the bedrock, when I could be digging at level 14 when there is much more ancient debris. And just as I was making these stairs here, I poked into a pocket of lava. It started flowing down the stairs under me, I didn't react fast enough and just had nowhere to run. Now that I have actually finished going up there and finished the tunnel as far as I wanted it to go, it turned out to be a good idea. Because that's how much ancient debris I found just digging a few hundred blocks of, of tunnel. Like, And it's not a huge tunnel, it's just too high and one wide. Oh yeah. Bow bow. Chick chick chick. All right, that's enough distractions for this time. I need to get to doing what I was actually intending to do this time. And that is starting building my storage system because my storage right now is terrible. This area here I have marked with this square is where the base of the base is going to be. The base of base. Interesting. And I need to clear it out. No better time than now.
in retrospect it would probably have been faster to just go to the nether, grind some wither skeletons and get a beacon. Because this took hours and I am very very intimidated because this looked so much smaller in creative when I was planning it. Oh well. Maybe I bit off more than I can chew, but the only way we can know is to try. actually doesn't look half bad. It's a decent start. Unfortunately I have ran out of blackstone, which I expected I would because, well, I lost most of it in my lava swimming accident. This is around a quarter of all the resources I need to, well, to build the first stage, not to build the entire base, just to build the first stage, or the base of the base. What's gonna happen here is that the four little round things are gonna turn into tentacles. Or something like tentacles, they're not exactly tentacles but something that might look a little bit like tentacles. They're gonna stick up from the ground, up in all, in four different directions, and they're gonna hold up the actual base, which is gonna be relatively high up. But if I have done my math and measurements correctly, the no part of the finished base will stick up more than I think 70 blocks from the middle. I don't remember but I have it written down and I, I checked. And uh, yeah all the biomes here are mushroom island. I will not reach the ocean here. So I don't need to do any spawn proofing or lighting. I can just play around with moody lights or not having everything spawn proofed and that's why I picked the dimension I picked. And yes, I am of course using a schematic mod because it would be impossible to get the shape right. Otherwise I spent days and days in creative to get the shape right and I would definitely not like to mess it up when moving it into survival. Not gonna show much more. You can just show this will be 
the next layer, of course. A little fun detail here, which I've been spent quite some bit working on and trying to figure out, is that the structure starts almost as four separate squares, and then the squares gradually, slowly get rounder and rounder and rounder. It's pretty easy to see that this part here is definitely not a circle. Like, this is... This is not a circle, this is a square with a little bit of a rounded corner. And this is another square with a little bit more rounded corner. And etc. That's how it continues. And I, I think that's pretty neat. And it took some math to figure it out. But yeah. Now, I will have to spend quite some time mining again to get the black stone I need for this. So that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye!